Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the neural filters inside of Photoshop. We're going to be doing this with a number of uh, images and we're going to be focusing on the colorize filter, which is one of the ones that I think you have to download. Now this image here is actually a fairly small one. So we're going to be seeing what the how the filter works with large images and small images now i finished downloading it and we can just turn it on because uh, it does require first of all a bit of a download and let me just zoom in a little bit and as you can see it's pretty quick a lot of people were asking me about the equipment uh for getting speed i don't really know how it works but i can tell you i'm working on a uh, on a machine with an rtx 3070 nvidia card and a kind of mid-level first generation Ryzen. So the CPU is not weak, but not powerful either. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got here. I think it's interesting that it's got the skin tones pretty much correct. I want to work on the background just to make the background a little bit more. We've got this dual tone thing going on here with the background here being different. Let's see what we can do with that. We can add a focal point. This is pretty much the first time I'm playing around with the focal points. We can choose a color. Let's choose a very low saturation blue color. Make it a little bit dark. And you can see it changes the, the emphasis and we could maybe add another one here. And maybe just make his own skin tones a little bit more. I think it will be easier if I work with this. Just assume he's a nice blonde dude. So the skin and the hair is all roughly similar. So you can see, you can change, you can adapt the colors a little bit. It's looking pretty good. There's a little bit of an area here where I think it's it needs a little bit of a touching up. Maybe around here as well, there's some, some colors I'm not convinced about. Let's see if we can work with his jacket, make that a little bit different. Uh, let's make that a little bit more bluish nice and dark so you can see you've got options you've got options with this filter let's hit OK and you can see that we've got a, a new image here now one thing I noticed is that when you choose the default out output you sometimes get this weirdness going on and let me just create a solid color it literally just creates this weird selection where it's outputting some of the image to a new layer but not all of the image you have a lot of transparency going on uh, i'm not entirely sure how to switch that off but that's something obviously i would want to switch off if i could another image this is an image from uh ansel adams corporal jimmy shohara let's make sure that it's in rgb mode yeah i can see it's in rgb mode and uh, let's also try to see what happens if we work in 16-bit color let's go to filters neural filters and see what happens so this is a much much larger image it's showing about a third of the original size here um, and we'll see how long it takes to actually apply this we'll turn it on that was quick that was nice and quick um, what we'll do with this portrait is maybe just go ahead and try some of the profiles that they've introduced so when i first did this it was actually in uh, software called Photoshop Express and they had also some options and you could choose different styles so you could choose heavy saturation in Photoshop itself they've got more options so we could let me just scroll up and down we can choose less saturation for instance like that and also, yeah, we can choose these different options that will give you different outcomes. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, let's choose retro blue brown. And reduce the intensity, the profile intensity. So this is looking kind of subtle. I would definitely want to change the the, the the clothing here to make that a little bit more 
jazzy in terms of its color. I think the sky is looking a bit too bluish, but it's an interesting portrait. This guy's story was that he was a Japanese corporal, Japanese American corporal in the in, in the American military, and uh, they they took the guy out from his home and put him in in an internment camp when the Second World War um, came, and this was a portrait done by uh, Ansel Adams when the uh, you know at the start of the Second World War. There are some options where you can change the colors. So if we wanted to, we could make this a little bit more cyan, a little bit more blue. And we can change the color so that it's more background or more foreground. So I could change this to uh, what they call fo focus color that would shift things more in the, in, in the region of the focus. If I just crank this up like that, you'll be able to see that a little bit more. We're gonna get something that looks a little bit more like the the focal point and less like the the background point um, background color um, in this image you can't really see the changes as you can in some images um, and we've got reduced color artifacts as well let's see what that does So it's not really changing that much. Let's see what happens if we turn off the profile and just go with the natural. That's with the natural. I would definitely want to work a little bit around there just to remove some of the foreground color from uh, this area here. I would want to remove some of the background color from his uh, from his helmet. Uh, but let's hit OK and let's choose duplicate layer and see what that does in terms of output and whether it looks better than the previous output. So I would say that that's better than the previous one where we had all those dots and weird stuff going on, uh, all that transparency going on. Um, the next one we're going to take a look at is going to be this guy here. This is going to be some different skin tones, uh, some African Americans. Let's go and choose, for, this is from about 1900. And it can certainly f figure out where the faces are. This is a different portrait. This is the, uh, the this, is, this is a different filter, the smart portrait filter. Let's go to colorize, turn that on. Okay, I would say that the skin tones are looking pretty pretty pleasant. Uh, it's got the skin tones broadly right. Maybe let's try one of these profiles. Mm, interesting. Um, we could reduce the saturation. Um, I'm going to try and play with the guy's jacket here because that looks completely off. It's totally different colors. So let's go ahead and move up and add a focal point there. And let's make that pretty much black. Give him a nice black jacket to work with. And you can see with this one, it's it's not, <laughs> it's not producing the result that I wanted. And I'm not sure how to remove the this focal point, but this focal point is all wrong. This is this is just plain wrong. Let me hit backspace, delete. I'm not sure how to, to remove the, the, the focal points, but <laughs> This is gone completely awry. You can go ahead and hit the reset uh, to take it back to the original. And I don't know how to actually reactivate it. Maybe doing that. Okay, let's hit OK again, I think duplicate layer. So you've got options to go to a smart filter if you want to wanted to. Let's let's do that for this one. So it gives you a smart filter and you can turn the filter on and off. You can open an image in Photoshop by dragging it to the toolbar. And we're going to work with this guy here. So this one is a very, very large image and hopefully that will give the filter plenty of information to work with. Let's crop this. Choose RGB mode and let's go and hit the neural filter. 
I actually tried this one inside of Photoshop Express. The, 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 the results were interesting. <laughs> they were actually very similar to this, the results I got inside of Photoshop Express. So these filters can improve over time. So this photograph is a pho photograph by Dorothea Lange or Lang. She took this portrait in the 1930s depression and it's a portrait it has a very long name, but essentially it's some migrant farmers who were, um, I think, pea pickers who were uh, destitute. Uh, the, the, the depression was, uh, uh, I think there was a drought as well. There was a depression drought. This is California in the 1930s. It's a very well, well known portrait. And I actually did uh, a tutorial a couple of years back on how to turn this into sepia tone. So it's inter interesting to see the artificial intelligence trying to work with this and to make this um, color, how to colorize it. I like the way that it's got the, the woman's sort of tattered dress. You can kind of see just how tatty everything is when it's colorized. It, you, it's, you can just see how grimy and dirty everything is. Uh, w once it's colorized like this, you can see they're very, very poor, very, uh, they've hit on hard times. Apparently she had seven children. When this portrait was taken, apparently the woman who took the portrait was getting the guys in the in the portrait to pose one, one way and then pose another way. Uh, there's an interesting story about the, the, the portrait. Um, what I want to do with this one is to try to work with the color just to make this maybe a little bit more shut up. <laughs> make it look a little bit more like the rest of the clothing here. So we could once again go up and use the uh, focal points. And I would really like to be able to choose to pick a color in the image to use for the focal point, but I'm not sure how to do that. So I'm just gonna have to just guess. I'm gonna have to eyeball this. So I think it took quite a while to actually update. So I think you, you just need to give it maybe about half a minute or so to update. This is a really, really large image. Uh, I think I can show you how large it is. That is the size of the image. So maybe it does take a little bit longer to update. Let's try to reduce the saturation. And I want to see if we can actually pick up the point at which this, this woman's dress, I wonder if it can find the edge and actually adapt uh, in the way that I want it to so that it gives her dress slightly less saturation. Yeah, I think it's kind of separating them out into two different, two different individuals. You can see where one ends and the other one begins. Um, <clears throat> I think the other thing I want to work with, I really like what it's done. I, I, I think it's done a, a very good job on this, on this portrait here. Um, when I did this with Photoshop Express, there were some areas like this area here where it didn't, it wasn't quite sure what the color should be. Um, and it's, it's, it wasn't always getting the, the the regions where you have one shape ending and another one beginning quite right. So it would be necessary to go in there maybe with a with a paintbrush and just paint on some colors. But what we'll do is do the usual thing and go to duplicate layer, which I think is probably the best option. And that is our portrait of a migrant P destitute in the 1930s uh, depression. So I think that's actually quite a good edit. Uh, and I think that's a nice place to, to leave the, to leave the video. Um, obviously as the image sizes get larger, it, the, the, the filters run a little bit more s slowly, but I think that gives you a little bit more room to come and work uh, with the, with the paintbrush and just 
brush away areas where you need to to make adjustments if you wanted to do that what I'm going to do, guys, um, I'm going to have a link in the description to a website. If you want to get this type of thing done professionally, there's a website called Fiverr where you can actually get people to do this uh, professionally. And I'll have a link to that website in the description. They've got uh, one part of the website where it's just general uh, artists who can do this for a particular price. But if you need to get this kind of service done, um, they've got another part of their website, which is individuals who they've specially chosen for their skills to to be able to do retouching if i can find someone in that section i will link directly to them as well uh, if, if you want uh, professional portrait retouching and hopefully if you've got photoshop you'll have lots of fun with this particular filter i will see you guys in the next video till then take care bye